Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. Before we begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine, consider this important fact about gasoline. Any gasoline can be refined in such a way as to stress one feature at the expense of others... But Chevron Supreme Gasoline is designed to give you all eight necessary high-performance qualities. Starting, warm-up, acceleration, area blending, vapor lock prevention, anti-knock, and power. For top performance under all driving conditions, shift to the gas with all eight Chevron Supreme Gasoline. At standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Starlight Pier, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, looks like I'm about to lose everything I got because of a string of circumstances I can't control. I own the amusement zone on Starlight Pier. You've never heard of me, but you've probably read in the papers about the accidents that have been happening down here the last couple of weeks. Somebody's out to get me, Mr. Valentine. Out to ruin my business. Maybe you can find out and stop it. If you want to try, please take a boat onto the Tunnel of Love this Friday afternoon at exactly one o'clock. Sounds like a lot of folderol, but I'll explain when I see you. Sign, Tex Manners. George. Yeah, Brooks. I don't like this. Too dark in here for you? Oh, don't worry. I'm a very exemplary character, Angel. Oh, look. Know, huh? Oh, the goon boy with the eerie green light on him, huh? Ah, you've seen him before. Never used to scare you. I know it. I guess I'm just silly. Why the owner of an amusement park should want to meet you in this tunnel of love place instead of his office? Well, maybe just another way of drumming up trade. Business does seem pretty slim today out there. There isn't another boat going through here, darling. Maybe it's some kind of a plot. George. Yeah, I'm Valentine. You text matters? That's right. Waiting for your boat. I can't see it, but I can't stop it. Uh, yeah, I got it. Hey, you in the front seat? Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'll get in the back. If I can find it in the dark. There. See, I thought I heard a woman's voice. You did. Miss Brooks, my assistant. Oh. Well, okay. Wait, I'll let the boat drift along again. Mr. Manners, why did you want us to meet you here? Didn't want anybody to know I've hired Mr. Valentine. Figure you can work better if nobody knows who you are. Yeah. Well, uh, just what do you want me to do? Find out who's trying to sabotage my business, like I told you in my letter. You've read about what's been going on. Well, yeah, I saw where your Ferris wheel broke down. Car came off when it was up high, mighty close to killing somebody. Oh, and didn't something happen to your roller coaster? Sure did. The train was almost at the top of the pull. It broke loose, raced all the way back down. One lady broke on. Uh, what makes you think it's sabotage, Mr. Manners? Those things do happen, don't they? Not with my equipment. Never have any accidents. And they both happened on a Friday. Last two weeks. Well, still, it might be a coincidence. Couldn't be. I examined the gear both times myself. It had been tampered with by somebody who knows carnival machinery. Well, I'll have to take your word for that. You think it's somebody right here on your own pier, huh? Looks that way. Just I can't understand it. All the people who run my concessions are all right. No enemies among them, huh? Not that I know of. Uh, both of these accidents have happened on Friday? Yes, ma'am. Not that I'm superstitious about Fridays, you understand, but... Nobody wants to ride the wheel or the rolly anymore. Another one or two of these things, and nobody will come to the pier. Uh-huh. Got any idea where I ought to start on this job, Mr. Manners? 
Valentine, I haven't got a thing to help. George, there's another one of those horrible things. Oh, now, look, watch your nerves, Brooksy, just because it's... George! Where are you, Brooksy? I'm right here. Take it easy. The water's shallow. You can stand in it. I got you, Angel. Come on, stand up. That's right. I I am. All right. That's... That big monstrosity fell right over on our boat. It almost hit us. All right, I know, I know. Now, easy. Hey, hey, how do we get out of here, Manis? Wait over this way. There's a lid. Yeah, it better be. I'll help you, Angel. Keep coming. This way. Follow my boy. Okay. Okay, we're with you. You feel the lid? Yeah, got it. All right, up with you, Brooksy. Yeah, sure. Okay, there you are. Oh. Well, nice experience you're giving us, Manis. Friday again. I didn't think they'd do anything to the tunnel of love. Yeah, well, they did, all right. Now, where do we go from here? That thing's wrecked the boat. Hello! Hello! Hold on, I'm coming! That's Ned Parker. He runs the tunnel. He'll get you out back. Wait for him. Well, what about you? There's a trap door just down here. I'm getting out. Don't tell Ned you saw me in here. Are you think he's mixed up in this? I don't know. That's for you to find out, Valentine. Make some excuse to come to the office when you want to see me, but stick with it. I'll see you later. Where are you, people? Call out. We're here, all right, and we ought to sue you. What do you mean, you ought to sue me? I waited for your boat to come out of the tunnel, and... Where did I turn on my flashlight? Well... Is that all you have to say? What are you doing sitting up there on the ledge, dripping wet? Maybe you can tell us. Look at our boat. What? Why, you... What happened? One of your big dummies fell over on us. Darn near killed us. I think we will sue you. Oh, no, don't sue me. I don't own this concession. Just run it. If you're going to sue anybody, it's the owner, Tex Manor. Oh. Tex Manor. He might settle with you if he can afford it. <laughs> now I'll, I'll get you out of here. You Wheels McKay? Huh? Well, how did you know? I figured you must be. Says right there on the sign. Manager, Wheels McKay. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. You gonna take a ride? Well, uh, no, not right now. Maybe later. Say, uh, you don't seem to be doing much of any business today. No, no, yesterday or for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, I know. I was talking to the guy that runs the Ferris wheel. Uh, what's his name? Joe Park? Yeah, that's it. He tells me the same thing. Guess it's because of these accidents, huh? Of course it is. People staying away like we had to play. Oh, that's too bad. Guess that thing in the tunnel of love yesterday won't help any either, will it? No. There's another. Say, ain't you the one that was on that ride when it happened? That's right. Yeah. So you come out all dripping wet. How come you're back again so soon? Oh, I don't know. I sort of like these places. Besides, I don't have to worry today. It isn't Friday. No, you're right. Look. You're up to something around here. What is it? Insurance company? Oh, no, no. Just curiosity. Well, might come back and take a ride later, Wheels. Yeah. Do that. Madame Zelda knows all, tells all. Your future is an open book. You, sir. Hmm? Sell your fortune. Oh, well, sure. That's a good idea. How much? For you, 25 cents. That's a deal. There you are. Let's hear the worst. Ah, you say the worst. Well, that's just a figure of speech. Perhaps not. No? What do you mean by that? I see for you danger. Danger in the near future in this place, on Starlight Pier. Yeah? But you may avoid the danger. Do not come here again, or evil will befall you. Uh-huh. Does it have anything to do with these accidents out here? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Look, Madam Zelda, if you can read the future so well, why can't you predict what's going to happen next and tell the boss? It is not given to me to tell this yet. My warning is to you. Do not come here again. <laughs> See you for... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were busy. Valentine, what are you doing here? I thought I said... 
Oh, never mind. Uh, this is Sandy, my night watchman, Mr. Valentine. How long? Oh, you, Mr. Valentine. That's all for now, Sandy. Just remember what I said. No sleeping on the job, especially on Thursday night. I got it, Mr. Manners. You can bank on me. Well, pleased to know you, Mr. Valentine. Yeah, sure. Say, what'd you come down for today? I just want to talk to the people who run your concessions. Oh, who'd you see? Mm, Ned Parker, Tunnel of Love, Joe Parks, the Ferris Wheel. Then I saw Wheels McKay. Yeah? Best bet so far. Why do you say that? Oh, acted pretty suspicious. Tried to find out what I was doing around here. Well, sure, that makes sense. I told Wheels I was getting somebody in to work on this thing. Naturally, he's going to suspect anybody who asks questions. Oh, and uh, and also the fortune teller. She warned me to stay away. <laughs> well, you know that accent's a phony. She happens to be Wheels McKay's wife. She was just afraid you'd stick your neck out too far, I guess. Uh-huh. Well, maybe that is it. Hey, by the way, how come you just talk to the people who had accidents on their rides? Why not try the others? Oh, now, look, Tex, if this is an inside job and one of your concession managers is doing it, wouldn't he have something happen to his own ride so he wouldn't be suspected? Well, could be. I see what you mean. But I just don't happen to go along with you on that. Oh, you may be right. We'll soon find out. Yeah? How so? I'm going to meet you here Thursday night after the pier's closed. Maybe your night watchman doesn't keep his eyes open. But I'm going to. Afraid you off on a wild goose chase, Valentine. Maybe. By the way, did you tell anybody at all that I'd be here tonight? Nope. Nobody. Good, good. Hey, uh, where's the watchman? What's his name? Sandy? Yeah, he's probably making his rounds somewhere. I haven't seen him since we started down the pier. No? Or anybody else, for that matter. Well, I told you, probably they're not going to do Wait a minute, it. hold on, will you? Listen to that. Hey, comes from over there by the diving bell. Yeah. He ducked back in the shadow. Okay. Sure. I can see a figure over there now. Somebody tinkering with a power plant for the bell. Come on, let's get over there. No, no, wait a minute. We won't. I will. Two of us will be spotted too easily. You go back to your office. Stay in the shadow so they won't see you. How about you? I'm going around the other side of the bell and surprise them. I'll get back to you in a few minutes. Okay, but be careful, son. Can't tell. Sure, sure. Okay, Buster, what's the idea? That's better, friend. Just stay where you are. This is one Thursday night party that didn't come off, huh? Now, stand up. Oh, wait a minute now. You look out. You get... In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Which is the most important tire on your car? Right. The oldest and smoothest tire is the most important because that's the one that will probably cause trouble first. And that's one reason why it pays to have your tires checked regularly by car savers at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations. Car savers are experts at making tires last longer. For instance, they recommend a scientific pattern of tire switching every three to 5,000 miles. And that includes the spare, too for it needs regular service to keep the rubber flexed and lively. Car savers also check your tires for cuts and bruises to be sure that they're safe and road-ready. And car savers don't overlook the importance of keeping your tires properly inflated. They inspect them regularly to be sure that the correct pressure is maintained. So if you want to be sure that all your tires are in good shape, drive in soon for free tire inspection by the car savers at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations. For tire switching at regular intervals, for new tires, for any kind of tire service, you can depend on car savers. They'll help you get more and more miles out of your present tires. And it's just one of the many services available to Western motorists at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. <laughs> Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. 
You're hired by Tex Manners, the owner of an amusement zone called Starlight Pier, to try and discover the reason behind accidents that have been happening on his concessions. As a matter of fact, you've been involved in one of them yourself, as usual, on a Friday. But on Thursday night, when you think you've finally caught up with the saboteur, you find yourself not thinking at all. If your name is George Valentine, you suddenly come back to consciousness, flat on your back beside the diving bell machinery, with a voice coming closer and closer. Hello! I say hello! What's going on? Oh. Yeah, better not try any funny business. I've got you... Oh. oh, you're that young fellow that was in Mr. Manor's office the yeah. other day. I am. Hi, name of Valentine. Yeah. And you'd be a night watchman, name of Sandy. Aye, yeah, that's right. But say, what are you doing around here this time of night, lad? That takes a bit of explaining. Yeah. By the way, where were you a few minutes ago? That takes a bit of explaining, too. Look here, lad. What kind of talk is that? I was down the pier on my rounds. I heard a noise back here. Sure you weren't right close by here at the time? What are you trying to say by that? I'd better turn you over to Mr. Manor. Or the other way around. Give me that flashlight. I will not. Oh, yes, you will. Something I want to look at. Now, look here. That's better. Yeah, just what I thought I saw. Huh? What? Knuckles on your right hand there. They seem to be bleeding. I, I know. I hurt my hand on a gate. Or on somebody's face. Somebody's face? What are you talking about? Mine, maybe. Look, lad, you're out of your head or something. I'll take you back to Mr. Manor's office. Wait a minute, and... will you? thought I saw something. All right, lad. No, no tricks now. What are you looking for? Uh, nothing. Nothing. I just thought whoever hit me left a calling card. I was wrong. You picked up something. No, no. I thought I saw a piece of paper on the ground over there. It was just uh, this wrench. Now, now, no, don't try anything. Actually not. You've got the gun. I've only got a flashlight. And a wrench. Well, here, take it if you're worried. Now, come on. Let's get back to Tex Manor's office so you can turn me in. So that's the way it was, Mr. Manners. I found this lad flat on his back beside the diving bell, and he even tried to accuse me. All right, me. Sandy, all right. Mr. Valentine's okay. You don't have to worry about it. That's all. Aye, sir. Very well. But if you need any help, just call up, sir. Yeah, all right, Sandy. But I won't. Well, Valentine, whoever it was saw you tinkering with the diving bell got to you first, huh? Quite neatly, yes. Left me for a little nap. Couldn't see who it was? No, it was too dark. He must have heard the voice. Didn't he say anything? Not a word. Jumped me, laid in one good sock to the button, and I was out. That's too bad. That's an understatement. Incidentally, do you know a cafe up the street called the Tropicana? Tropicana? Yeah. No, can't say I do. Just might help us to clean up this case. How? That's what I got to find out. By the way, a week from tomorrow morning, in case we haven't got to the bottom of this thing, watch out for the shoot the shoots. Might be bad. Now, hey, son, how do you know all this? Well, maybe I had a vision while I was knocked out. Take it easy, Tex. See you tomorrow. George. Yeah, Angel? I'm not trying to butt in, but you said we're going to a cafe called the uh, Tropicana. That is right. Well, would you mind telling me what that has to do with Mr. Manners and the Starlight Pier? Not at all. Matter of fact, I'll show you. Here. What, this paper? That's right. But it's only a list. George. What's that? This is a list of the rides at Starlight Pier. Sure. In the order of their fate. I picked that up beside the diving bell after I came to last night. Roller coaster, Ferris wheel, tunnel of love, diving bell, shoot the shoot. Darling. Well. Wow. But those are the rides that have had accidents. Sure. Oh, but the shoot the shoot in Virginia Reel. Turn it over, Brooksy. What? Oh. Well, it's torn off the top of a menu. Menu from the Tropicana Cafe. Right, and here we are. You think they'd know who made that list? No, probably not. But they know who comes here from Starlight Pier. Come on, let's go. Are you going to come right out and ask them, George? No, no, indeed. Some people are cagey. I'm going to buy the cafe. You what? That's right. But first I have to know what kind of trade they have. But supposing they're not willing to sell it. Always wanted to own a cafe. Let's go in. Okay. Oh. Anybody here? Yes, I'm in. Okay. 
Sorry, folks, we're not open yet. We open at 11. Oh, that's all right. I just wanted to see the owner. Well, I'm the owner. Good, good. How do you do? My name is Valentine, and this is my friend, Miss Brooks. How do you do? How do you and uh, you're... Fowler, Matt Fowler. Matt Fowler. What can I do for you? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Fowler, I'm in the market to buy a cafe just like this one. You interested in selling? I don't know. Maybe if the price is right. Uh-huh. How's business? Pretty fair. Not great, but pretty fair. Well, you ought to get a pretty good play from Starlight. You're so close. Those people? <laughs> they eat hot dogs and hamburgers on the pier. Oh, no, no. I mean the people who work there. Some of them must eat here, don't they? Can't say. All I know about my customers is they eat and pay for it. Don't know who they are. You haven't owned the place very long yourself, have you, Mr. Fowler? What do you mean? Well, I just noticed the car outside. It's yours, isn't it? Yes, that's With right. Arkansas license plate, so I thought naturally. Yeah, that's right. I came from Arkansas just a few months ago. Oh, figure the restaurant business is better here. I wasn't running a cafe there. I had a carny. Carnival, huh? Say, that's interesting. It wasn't. Business dropped off and I lost it. Had to start all over again. Oh, well, that's too bad. Well, I'm not interested in carnivals anyway. I got a little Frank stand in town called the Barking Dog, but I want to branch out. See. Drove up here last night, was going to stop in, but it was after midnight. Didn't think the owner'd be in. No, it was right here all night until two in the morning. Oh. Well, uh, think you'd be interested in selling? Well, in a month or so, I might. Oh, say, that's great. Of course, I couldn't swing the thing alone. I got a backer. He'd have to see it first. Yeah, I understand. But I'm sure he'd like this location as much as I do. Say, uh, where's that door in the back go to? That's my office. Oh, I see. Hey, look, I got an idea. What is it, George? Well, while we're here, I'd like to take a picture of the place to show Larry. That's my backer. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, you don't mind, Mr. Fowler. No, go right ahead. Good, okay. I got a flash camera out in the car. Uh, you and Miss Brooks sit over there at that table. Kind of dress up the picture a little, huh? All right, yeah. Well, now you two get all set and I'll bring in the camera. Believe me, this ought to sell a bill of goods. All right, Valentine, Miss Brooks, have a seat. Thanks, Mr. Manning. Well, you act as though you got something, Valentine. Well, I think I have. Tell me, Tex, did you ever have a business in Arkansas? Why, sure. Just before I came here, I had a carnival in Pine Bluff. Oh, well, that's great. Now we're getting somewhere. Did you ever know a man by the name of Matt Fowler? Matt Fowler? Uh-huh. No, can't say as I did. Name isn't familiar. Well, here's a picture of him. I took at the Tropicana yesterday. You take a look at it. Know the man? Mm, no. No, never set eyes on that man, son. Oh. Well, it was a good try anyway. You and this character both had carnivals in Arkansas. You have businesses a few blocks from each other. It, it sort of added up. I'm sorry it didn't work, Valentine. At least you're on the job. Try again, will you? I'd better try again, and fast. They might just try switching the order of these accidents, and you'd have a mess of broken arms and heads. A few more, Valentine. I'll be out of business. I know. Brooksy? Yes, George? Let's get back to the office. I want to sit down and do some thinking. George, you're not getting anywhere, and you know it. Let's close up the office for the day. It's going to add up. It's going to add up two and two about Are you up. sure you're all right, darling? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I'm getting better and better. You are? How? Hey, look, Brooksy, it's a long shot, but long shots do come in and pay off. Riddles again. Tell you when I get it worked out. Hey, first call Tex Matthews. Yes, Master. Tell him to meet us behind the Tropical Canna Cafe at exactly quarter of eight tomorrow night. Uh-huh. Suppose he wants to know why. Well, he doesn't have to yet. Tell him to bring along a cop, plain clothes man, if he can get one, and be sure they're not seen. I suppose detectives play long shots, too. Now, you go on home. Tonight, I got to pay a short visit to Starlight Pier after the lights are out. George, somebody's coming. It must be Tex. Yeah, about time. Valentine? Yeah. That's you, Tex? Sure. Where are you? Over this way, right back at the building. Okay. I don't know what kind of tomfoolishness you're up to, Valentine. Oh, this is Sergeant Laird. Hello, Valentine. What's up? Well, you'll see for yourself in just a minute, Sarge. And if I am right, you better be ready to make a quick pinch. 
Just one thing to do first. Yeah, what, Jim? You gotta pry up the window to this office so we can hear what goes on inside. I told you, I don't know the man that owns this place. That's right. But maybe he knows you. There. That ought to be enough. Hey, you got any idea what time it is? Must be just about eight. We were delayed. Doesn't matter, Sarge. You didn't miss anything. Well, now we'll just have to wait. You're sure you know how to play detective, Valentine? If that was a nasty crack, I'll disregard it, Sergeant. George, hmm? somebody's coming in the door. Oh, yeah. Okay, get your ears close to the window and listen. Don't make any noise. Come on in, I'll shut the door. Yeah, okay. Okay, now, what's on your mind, Wheels? Uh, don't like you coming here, you know. Ah, well, what do you mean, Matt? You sent for me. I sent for you? Sure. I got the note you slipped under the box office door when I opened up this now, morning. Now, wait a minute. I didn't I figured think... it was something about wrecking the shoots tomorrow night. I've got it all set up, Matt, just like you want it. Ought to be easy. Wheels. Yeah? I'm trying to tell you I didn't leave no note for you. What? And who did? How do I know? One thing for sure, there's Valentine's catching on, and we got to play it fast and safe from now on. Switch the days you wreck the shoots and the reel. Yeah, sure, man. And don't get caught. Two more accidents on the pier, and we'll have Tex Manners out of business. I still get half interest when you take over. Sure, right on, Welch. Now, they're playing games, only we got to play it smart. Now, come on outside. Guess that explains it, Tex. Well, I'll be. Sure does, Valentine. You got enough on him to make the arrest, Sergeant? Yeah. Come on, Tex. We'll go around and take him at the front door. We sure will. Come on around, Valentine. Yeah, I'll be right with you. George, you left that note for Wheels McKay yourself. That's right. But how did you know he was the one? I didn't. Tell you about it when we get those boys in custody, Brooksy. <laughs> Here's a reminder for new car owners. New RPM motor oil exceeds all the requirements of car manufacturers who now recommend a heavy-duty motor oil. A new RPM doubles engine life, the time between major overhauls due to lubrication. Yes, even a cab company operating in the tough grind all cabs go through found new RPM reduced engine wear 71%. So for top protection for your engine, get new RPM motor oil at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. But, George, if you didn't know it was Wheels McKay who was wrecking the rides, what made you so sure he'd show up? I didn't know who'd show up. I didn't take a chance. What do you mean? (laughs) I left the same note at every concession. Yeah, I just added up Arkansas and Arkansas and an accomplice on the pier. Then all I had to do was wait for someone to show his hand. It just happened to be wheels. Then this Matt Fowler just wanted to put Tex out of business so he could take over the pier? I was a little more than that. Tex didn't know it, but he'd put Fowler's carnival out of business when he set up back in Arkansas. Wheels told the sergeant. Oh, well... Anyway, they're both off for jail and we've still got a whole evening ahead of us. Now, that's right, Angel. I sort of figured we'd go back to Starlight Pier. Oh, that would be fun. And ride in the tunnel of love? Uh Uh-uh. The Ferris wheel. Oh, George. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Harry Bartell was heard as Tex, Frank Gerstle as Wheels, Jerome Sheldon as Ned, Hal Gerard as Matt, and Eric Snowden as Sandy. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, for Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.